Today I'd like to talk about how our desire to adhere to principles of social cohesion destroys our ability to understand the world we live in, and consequently ourselves, and by extension offers us a very dim uh, pathway of progress, or rather dimly lit pathway of progress towards the future. Now, much of this was brought on by a recent encounter I had whilst playing an online game being on a TeamSpeak server. It seems mundane, but much of what I want to focus on today is mundane. That is to say, I don't want to speak about the lofty academics. I want to speak of everyday quotidian life as we encounter on the streets, in shops, restaurants, and indeed online and online communities. But when I'm speaking of online, I'm not talking about the in-your-face, vast, huge YouTube channels and the, the Reddit forums and all that sort of thing. I'm talking about day-to-day encounters. So what happened to motivate me to make this video? Recently, I began playing a new co-op shooter game, Killing Floor 2, a fun game involving weapons, classes, and in general, killing and slaying mutated monsters, a fun game for all. I decided to reacquaint myself with some people I used to play online games with, and I was on one particular person's server. Now, we were having fun. It was I and several other people, and for whatever reason, a conversation took a serious tone, and all of a sudden, we were talking about the topic of circumcision, specifically male circumcision. Now, I do not want this video to be about the topic of male circumcision. It is a, an enormous topic, in fact, and a topic unto itself, and that should be reserved for a separate video if I ever talk about it in full detail. Needless to say, however, I took the position that we should talk about male circumcision under a few guidelines. One, does it constitute a form of bodily mutilation? Two, should there be consent? And three, ultimately, what are the actual health benefits? And as I said, uh, I do not want to talk about in detail, at least here, what my point of view is. Of course, I'm not in favor of uh, male circumcision at birth at all, but I was offering my point of view backed up by facts, things I had read, and data that I have encountered. This person, on the other hand, was resistant to this, cited some rare examples where circumcision was necessary uh, in adulthood, and did not address the issues I was talking about in the case of infants, male infants, sucklings. The conversation continued for a while, and all of a sudden, one of the people I played with, with whom I had had a perfectly pleasant conversation about video games and Bioware and what have you as a company, came out and said, well, you know, I'm a reformed Jew and what you're saying offends me. I explained to him that his offense didn't matter, that offense does not constitute an argument, does not add to the data, and does nothing for the sake of the conversation. There was an uneasy and awkward silence that ensued. It was unpleasant, I have to admit, even for me. And I soon realized, of course, that nothing would come of this. We couldn't actually have a rational conversation where we list out criteria uh, for what constitutes, for example, mutilation, what the health benefits are, etc. In other words, the conversation stopper was, I am offended by this, and we should talk about something else. Now, I did stop the conversation eventually because I just saw it as being non-productive. It was going nowhere rather quickly, and I thought, well, what's the point? But it did get me thinking. Later on in the day, uh, I had another encounter with not the person who was the Reformed Jew. Incidentally, he told me later that he had to get offline because his mother was making him pork chops. Oh, the irony. But this other person... Uh, who is a person who seemingly cannot stop talking, she talks incessantly, had divulged a great deal of information, uh, not information I wanted to know, but she did it so anyway, about her family and about her sister. She described to me that her sister was a feminist and someone who suffers from severe bipolar 
uh, depression. A problem, I thought. And later on, she described to me how her sister was well-versed in linguistics and languages and that she and I would have a ball discussing these things. However, in reference to the fact that she told me that she was an avid feminist and a person suffering from a severe form of bipolar disorder, I said, in the words of Fisbin, that is Paladine, from the mythical god from the Dragonland series, upon being asked whether or not he should meet Raceland Majir, he said, I think a meeting between us would be most unpleasant. Or rather, I think it was Raceland who said that, come to think of it. And so I responded in like manner. I said a meeting between us would most likely be unpleasant and not very productive. She asked me for the reasons. I told her, number one, there is the feminist aspect. And to which she replied, oh, but my sister's open-minded and yada, yada, yada. Then she went and I said, well, the other aspect is a person with severe bipolar disorder is probably mentally unstable. And there is a distinct possibility that that person is not fit for a rational conversation due to these constant and extreme swings they experience. She apparently was offended by that, although she didn't tell me. I only found it much later in the evening when it turned out that due to the gossip mill that turns to be turns out to be the internet and team speak, she had told her retinue of white knights about it, and that would had explained to me then, after the fact, why the atmosphere was so frosty, so cold, and why I had received such an awkward welcome by the others. I asked her why she found it necessary to tell her friends, in air quotes, about this incident, and she told me that she had been offended. She could have, of course, told me directly that she had been offended. No, instead she turned to her quote-unquote friends, and what did she do? She told them they expressed quote-unquote concern for her, and I said, look, you are a fully grown woman, why can you not deal with this on your own? And she said, well, we're all very close and we need to share everything with each other, not really an answer. But in any event, the criterion here was offense. She was offended. Now, maybe I was incorrect. Maybe, in a factual sense, her feminist, extreme, bipolar, disordered sister is a great conversationalist. I don't know. But based on the limited data I had, I went with that and told her, no, it, wasn't, it wouldn't be a good, a good idea for me to speak to your sister. Now, when I did point out once again that she is a grown woman and can handle her herself, she told me, uh, that's why my friends, in air quotes, did not lash out at you. That is, that is why they held back, specifically, is what she said. The retinue of white knights holding back, as if on a leash, waiting to pounce, to come to the aid of the woman in need of being saved. It was interesting. This, of course, was not the first time I encountered these people. Years ago, when I was still active on the Bioware sociopathy forums, I had frequent encounters with uh, feminists and their loyal and indeed enslaved white knights, and some of these encounters erupted into rather unpleasant explosions, and I had one such encounter with one of the leashed white knight gentlemen. Needless to say, all of this goes back to being offended. And the point I'm trying to make here is that, as Teal Deer said the other day, and I've said in the past, offense is not a valid argument. I am hurt by that is not a valid argument. None of this constitutes a valid argument. And yet we see throughout all levels of society, from the very top in the realm of politics, in the realm of academia, all the way through down through to the daily quotidian situations I have just described, Offense seems to be a conversation stopper. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about religion, gender relations, race, or family, for that matter. For example, I have a, an aunt, whom I personally don't like, but that has nothing to do with it, who is probably also bipolar, an extremely unstable individual, an unpleasant individual, and not someone really that people get along with. Would I then take offense if someone said, based on what you've told me, I probably wouldn't want to hang out with your aunt or talk to your aunt? Of course not. I don't want to either. But even if that weren't the case, I could recognize that this person 
uh, carries with herself certain difficulties, and these difficulties are unlikely to engender the desire to of for conversation with her. But what I am at its core getting at is the necessity of what we need to address, I think, as a community, and not just make to everyone who is in the let's get rid of all this politically correct bullshit game, and it, that counts many people. Uh, that includes the uh, the FFFs, the feminist first responders. That uh, includes even traditionalist people. That includes members of the MGTOW community. That includes a hoary host of different people. Now, this incident, along with several others in the past, have made me rethink my position on the need or the necessity for the FFF, the Feminist First Responders, people like Sargon of Akkad. I don't really think very much of Sargon of Akkad. I think he's primarily entertainment. But there are people such as Teal Deer who do a really good job of this sort of thing. And maybe this does need to be hammered away at. Maybe addressing all of this absurdity must be done on some level. I'm not going to be doing it myself. As I have explained many times, my mission statement, if you want to call it that, is my quest for knowledge and understanding the human world, be it the realm of language, the realm of biology, the realm of psychology, or anything else that human beings or human activity encompasses. That is what I'm interested in. But somebody needs to do it. My concern, my thoughts are that this actually might be successful. I mean, it's probably necessary by now. I'm just suspicious of the, or rather skeptical, of the possibility of a, of a trickle-down effect. No, quite the opposite. I think what we need to start doing as a community, and that is a very broad-sense community, is at the, at, on, at the very basic level in our daily lives, we need to stop accepting certain things as valid criteria for stopping a conversation. For example, I am offended. I am hurt. You can't say that because that will offend people. All these things, these are not valid reasons. And we should be not only heavily disinclined to accept these, we should flatten out not accept them. If we begin doing this in our daily lives from the ground up, I think we ultimately might be more successful in addressing some of these issues that we see in the greater sphere of the internet. You know, the Reddit th threads, the hashtags, the drama on YouTube, and what have you, and perhaps even academia. We're at the point now where we cannot honestly have a conversation about any number of given topics, which could be very interesting, very revealing, and indeed helpful to us trying to understand the world we live in, because someone will inevitably come along and say, I am offended by that. Who fucking cares? It doesn't matter, and it should not matter. And I propose that we all begin starting from the ground up at ground level, opposing this methodology of I am offended. We need to say, your offense does not matter. Your hurt feelings do not matter. None of that matters. Give me the facts. If you have an argument, make it. If you do not have an argument, shut up and contribute nothing. And I think ultimately... That's what it needs to come down to. Now, I believe this can be trained into people. Believe it or not, in my younger years, say in my early 20s, yes, I was liable to be offended on occasion by certain things, things that used to make me quite angry. But over the years, I managed to train myself to not take offense at things. I realized that a dispassionate worldview, a view that allows you to accept things at face value, that is factual value as opposed to the way things make me feel, is much more valuable and much more helpful to myself and I believe my fellow human beings than simply saying, oh, that offends me, or feeling hurt by things. It is possible to train yourself to remove those, I re those feelings which I personally regard as an obstacle, a barrier, and quite simply superfluous. How do we go about this? Well, first we need to understand why it is that the criterion of offense, or I'm hurt by this, is so valid. We value social cohesion. We value social cohesion in some cases beyond all other things. 
We are willing to conform to do things we don't like for the sake of social cohesion. And we are almost certainly uh, willing to suppress knowledge, information, and, certain, and the discussion of cer certain topics for the sake of social cohesion. I say social cohesion be damned. We're at the point now in our discourse where this is just no longer an option and it is a legitimate obstacle to honest, rational discourse and for that matter, pure and simple human inquiry. We want to understand the world. Wouldn't we all be better off if we understood, say, the differences between men and women as they are in the actual world and not, for example, under the guise of feminist propaganda? Wouldn't we be better off if we could rationally discuss the topic of male circumcision without a reformed Jew who eats pork chops coming in and saying, I'm offended because that's my religion. We ultimately would be, because we could get to the heart of the matter. These sorts of conversation stoppers are knowledge stoppers. They prevent us from understanding the world. Unfortunately for us, those who seek knowledge, people who value social cohesion over knowledge and understanding, and for that matter reason, are a huge blockade. They are a detriment to human progress. Do I believe we can convert these people? I don't know and I have to use the word convert, but we certainly need to train ourselves to, to the extent that we still feel this notion of offense or being hurt to get rid of this. We are no, the stakes are so high now, folks, that we're no longer in a position where we can say, I'm offended by this. Who cares? My feelings don't matter any more than your feelings matter. The only thing that matters are the facts, and those facts are going to help us get to a better place eventually. And to this end, uh, people who respond to feminists and deal with their shit, I do think actually have a place. I have rethought this, and it po probably uh, is necessary. As the old saying goes, constant blows break the stone. But I propose, as I've just said, a ground-up uh, method as well, that we, in our daily lives, start incorporating a no-tolerance policy for claims of offense and hurt feelings, that this should simply not apply, within reason. Of course, in certain contexts, it is very difficult to do that. For example, if you are working for someone uh, upon whom your salary depends, that is probably a bad idea. That is to say, it is a bad idea just because you could get uh, the shaft and you could go hungry and starve and all of those other reasons. But in a situation such as I was in, there's no reason to hold back, and indeed I didn't. I have no plans in uh, talking to these people anymore, indeed playing games with them, because they're not the sort of people I want to hang out with. People who are offended by things, who are hurt by things, these are not rational people, and they're not even people willing to attempt to train themselves to rid themselves of these uh, ridiculous feelings that they have. But the rest of us can do something. We can, step by step, inch by inch, or if you favor the metric system, centimeter by centimeter, attempt to inject a new policy into our own personal social discourse and how we deal with people. And this, of course, applies to the internet as well. Zero tolerance policy for bullshit. And offense and hurt feelings, for me, they constitute bullshit, and they should constitute bullshit for everyone because they are bullshit. They are not valid reasons, and quite frankly, frankly speaking, if the price of social cohesion is a flat-out denial of reason, facts, and the font of human knowledge, I, I will consign myself to being an outcast. I will reject social co cohesion, and I will not conform. It's simply not worth it. Not if the, if the price that we see going on, such as the rampant feminism everywhere, and what I've referred to as sort of lowercase uh, F feminism, the kind of white knightery, white knight uh, thuggery that I saw on display the other night, that sort of thing. No, we can simply can't afford it anymore. We're at, we are really at the crossroads, I think, and we need to take a different approach to our daily discourse. And I, I'm not ho hopeful, I hate that word, or optimistic about it, but I do think it's doable. I think it's possible and it's possible if many people who are aware of these of the many issues that we talk about 
take this very simple approach of not accepting offense or hurt feelings as valid criteria in conversations and discussions. And when people fail to put forth valid arguments, they should be dismissed, even if their feelings are hurt. In any event, I've talked now at length. I wanted to share some ideas with you about how we might be able to change things uh, bit by bit, slowly but surely. But I am now done. I think I've addressed the issue rather thoroughly, and I will finish this up right here. But as always, may your chosen deity watch over you, whoever that might be. Take care, and thanks for watching.